Hello, everybody. My name is Howie Heckman, one of the developers here at PTS. Uh, first off, thanks for joining us to, on today's webinar and taking some time out of your day to check out our uh, Clearstream RFID product and our BLE zoning. Um, so this webinar is going to go into BLE zoning, what it is, uh, how you can set it up, and kind of a live demonstration of actually doing some BLE zoning. Um, with our Clearstream RFID product, I'll be using the tool to set up uh, two zones in this case and show you how to track some beacons moving between those zones and actually see them in real time um, moving throughout our facility here. Um, so for today, the agenda will just be to um, talk just really briefly about what Clearstream RFID is for anybody that's new to the product, uh, then go into a little bit about BLE zoning, what that is as well, uh, and kind of describe some of the use cases for it a live demo of the uh, of the setup, and then as always, a question and answer period at the end. So if you guys have any questions as I go through anything, um, please feel free to uh, send those over. Use the question panel um, in the GoToMeeting toolbar there, and I'll try to answer as many as possible. And as always, I'll have the contact information up at the end in case you have any questions. If you're trying to set this up yourself or anything about the webinar today, you can reach out to us after the webinar. And also, if you could follow us on social media. So uh, all of these webinars that we do, uh, as well as all new content, we'll post on our social media pages. So please follow us there. You can check out these videos afterwards if you'd like to review any of the content. And you'll see and be notified of any new stuff that's posted to, the, to our website. So it's a good place to kind of learn about the product, new features, and just see some of these webinars if you'd like to review everything. A little bit about what PTS is, uh, Introduction to Portable Technology Solutions. So uh, PTS has been around since about 2000. We develop data collection software for both mobile devices, uh, for barcode scanning, uh, RFID scanning, BLE scanning on mobile, Android, iOS, and Windows-based devices in our Tracer Plus product. So if you're not familiar with that, go ahead and check that out as well. That'll uh, allow you to set up custom mobile forms with, again, no programming involved. Uh, and you can build in technologies like barcode scanning, RFID, and BLE scanning on those mobile devices as well, and deploy your applications that you've developed to uh, iOS, Android, and Windows-based devices. Uh, we also have our Clearstream RFID product. That's what I'm going to be showing you today, specifically for BLE. But it's a um, middleware tool that allows you, again, through no programming, to map fixed RFID readers, Bluetooth gateways uh, to pre-existing systems. So it can go to any system that you might have on the back end, or even into our final product here is our PTS Cloud. Uh, which allows you to map your mo either mobile devices in our Tracer Plus world or the Clearstream uh, fixed RFID and BLE gateways to a uh, customizable cloud uh, product that can be used for data collection. And that's good for an end-to-end -end solution where you may not have a back-end database to map these mobile devices or fixed RFID readers. The PTS Cloud will allow you to uh, sync your data to a central location that we can set up for you. Um, so. A little bit about Clearstream RFID, what Clearstream RFID is. Uh, again, it's a middleware that allows you to um, easily set up uh, fixed RFID readers, BLE gateways to back end systems. Um, so there's no programming involved. You're really just mapping these devices that are on your network to a pre existing system. When you start them up, they start scanning for RFID tags or BLE beacons and sending that data to your, um, to your back end. So it can be set up to track any type of tagged items through RFID or BLE. You can track the movement, like we're gonna talk about today, location of these assets, um, things like that. Um, and really it's a, it's a horizontal application where you can, can kind of set it up for anything you need. Any type of tracking you'd like to do with fixed RFID or BLE, you could uh, configure within Clearstream. Um, and one of the great things about it, again, is it can latch onto your pre-existing system. So you can easily map a fixed RFID reader into some database that you may already have in-house and start collecting RFID or BLE tagged information into that system. And there's no, ben uh, there's no uh, programming involved, so you can get up and running quickly. Uh, so I'll show you in a second, but all of the stuff that I show you today is uh, downloadable from our website and available as a free trial. So what is BLE zoning? Um, so any of you new to BLE zoning, uh, BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, and the BLE that we're talking about specifically here is for beacons. Now beacons are things that are attached to assets or personnel and can then be tracked within an environment. So they're actually battery powered devices that transmit their signal and then the gateways, the BLE gateways will pick them up. In my case here today, I'm going to be using uh, two beacons from uh, Zebra Technologies. There's the Zebra Super Beacon, they're called. 
um, but you can really use any type of beacon uh, in your setup and they would be affixed to, again, your products or personnel. Now there's BLE zoning, it's a zone-based tracking. So it's a real-time tracking for zones. And a zone could be something like a room, it could be an area within a warehouse, or it could be just some defined area that you'd like to track. Now it's not, the, the data that you get is not XY coordinates, so it's not uh, 10 feet off of uh, the, the left wall and uh, 15 feet off of the, the, the right wall. It's that the beacon is within a zone. So the setup that I'm going to show you today uh, will be setting up two zones and you can see the beacons being tracked between the two. Um, now, a couple of the benefits of beacons, it's a low cost, easy installation. So unlike fixed RFID, there's less equipment involved and some of the equipment is actually more affordable than fixed RFID. Now, these gateways are relatively small. They are PoE, so single um, wire to hook them up to your network and they're low cost and you can affix them to say your ceiling or some area that you'd like to cover for beacons and it'll cover a large area. Now, some of them have up to a 300 foot range. So these beacons can be tracked 300 feet away. Now the 300 feet, it gets a little less accurate as far as zones are concerned, but you can cover a larger area if you were to do something simply like um, validating that some product is within your facility or something like that, where you just wanna cover a large area um, and maybe to track these high value assets, personnel, things like that within that location. And you can easily set them up without having to do any tuning like you may have to do on the fixed RFID reading side. So you don't have to configure antennas, aim antennas and things like that for a portal uh, to try to get directionality. This is just a simple plug and play, plug it into your network, attach it to the ceiling, and then use our Clearstream product to start tracking those locations. We also have, if you see the pictures on the PowerPoint here, we have some uh, nice video online that kind of just demonstrates this little fun little video where we have Winston and Larry, two of our dogs here in the office, that are, have a beacon attached to them and we can track them throughout the offices here. So if you want to take a look, uh, just a short, quick video, you can see how the dogs are attached uh, with beacons and then how they're tracked throughout the PTS offices. Uh, but I'll be showing you kind of a similar thing in a live demo today. Um, so how does uh, BLE work? So as you can see from this picture here, there's two rooms. Um, the, the gateways are actually installed in each uh, room in this case. So we would have a, a gateway installed on the wall here um, in each of these. And then the beacons are affixed to the personnel or assets. So from the picture, you can see uh, this person here has a beacon attached and that beacon is actually transmitting a signal that are then picked up by the gateways in these rooms. Now the uh, two rooms as close as this, they'll actually be picked up by both gateways. Now Clearstream is actually doing the calculations behind the scenes to get the nearest gateway that that beacon is um, to and then reports that to your database. So as you move or as this beacon moves throughout a facility, if this person goes from this room to this room, that within Clearstream is created as a new event then triggered to send a location to your database that you choose. Um, so you get that real-time location of the beacon down to a zone and then also location history. So every event of switching from one room to another, Clearstream records that into your database. So you can see it's kind of a historical transaction of where this beacon has been throughout your facility and record it into the database. And then you can also see the real-time location of, of this beacon. So I'll be using a tool that here, uh, here that we provide with Clearstream to show you that it can bring up the, the uh, real-time location of that beacon down to a zone. Again, it's not X, Y coordinates, but it's a location, an area within your facility. And I have two gateways configured here that I'm gonna actually take these beacons and kind of walk between the two. Uh, one of them's just down the hallway a little bit from where I am right now. But it'll, you'll see from that tool, you can see the current location of the beacon. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna actually hop out and go over to, over to a live demonstration and show you how to configure this within Clearstream. Uh, so if I exit the PowerPoint here, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up Clearstream. Clearstream, okay, have it open. Uh, and before I get started, actually, I do wanna mention that everything you see here today is available, again, as a free trial from our website. So if you go to clearstreamrfid.com and then just click on the free download up here, you can download the Clearstream application and kind of configure everything as you need it. Um, and you can actually do everything that I show you here with that uh, trial of the uh, application and actually see those beacons um, in real time moving throughout your facility. Uh, so again, go to clearstreamrfid.com and click on the uh, free download. Let me just pull that back out of the way. 
So here I have Clear, uh, ClearStream RFID installed on my PC. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up some zones here. Now, typically when you start configuring ClearStream, you would go ahead and start adding profiles and you can kind of configure everything kind of as you need it. Add a reader or add a gateway to your environment, configure the settings of that reader, configure where that destination is going. Now with the BLE beacons and the gateways for zoning, it's a little bit, um, there's a lot of things that you have to configure. So we've actually added that's built into ClearStream and it's something that actually, if you want to reach out to us, um, it's, it's something that you have to enable within the product to use. But we've created a wizard to set this up, and it makes it a lot easier to configure zones uh, using the wizard. So what I'm going to do is start with an empty project here and just go up to the view menu. And it's like BLE zone wizard. So that'll close the application and start up this uh, zone, which is very simple to set up. And I'm just going to set up two zones. So you just start the, uh, start the wizard. Now you go ahead and name it. Uh, name the whole location. So this is going to be the overarching location of your facility, maybe. So I'm going to say PTS offices. So this is, again, the, the global location of where I have all my gateways. I'm going to record it here. If you had multiple sites, you would use this wizard at the diff for the different locations and then break it down into the zone. So I'm going to go ahead and name this one PTS offices and just hit next. Um, now I need to configure the beacons that I'm looking for. So if you're familiar with the different things about the beacons, the beacons have different protocols for how they send out and transmit their identifiers. Um, and the two biggest ones are iBeacon, um, which is an Apple standard. Uh, and the other one is Eddystone, which is a Google standard for how they transmit their identifiers. Uh, and your be the beacons are usually support both. And you can usually turn on off from the beacon, which one you want to use. The Zebra's Super Beacon support iBeacon standard. So I'm just going to turn off Eddystone because maybe if I have Eddystone tags in my environment, maybe the third party beacon, something like that, I don't want to actually record that information. So I'm going to turn off the Eddystone and I'll leave scan for iBeacons on. Finally, my two beacons I have actually have the, are configured with the same UUID. So I'm going to uh, add the UUID here so that I can filter uh, down to just those beacons. So for iBeacon, the UUID is typically like a group of beacons that you have, which you would encode as being all the same to the beacon. And then you have the other two properties here, major and minor number, which are used to individually identify that beacon, or you can use the MAC address also. That's another option for the, the ID of the beacon. So I'm gonna leave these as minus one and minus one, because I'll scan any major and any minor number, as long as the beacon has this UUID here. So, uh, I'm really just narrowing down the only beacons I want to record in my real-time location in here are these two Zebra beacons that I have configured with this UUID. So I'll just hit next. And now I actually have to just create my zones. So I'm going to just go ahead and set these up. Again, the zones are the location that you want to record a, that a beacon is in. Now I have one gateway here on my desk and I have another one just down the hallway a little bit in our tech room. Um, configured and turned on. So I'm just going to go ahead and configure those two zones within my environment here. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one my desk. You just have to add the MAC address of the gateway here and then the size of the zone. I'll just leave this as one meter here, but you can configure how big this zone is from the uh, and the gateway is the center point of that. So if I say one meter, that's going to be about a two meter wide zone that needs to be configured. Any beacon that comes within that zone will be recorded as a beacon at that location to your database. So I put my desk there and hit add zone. The other one I'm going to do is call it tech room. Uh, this one has a MAC address here. I'm just copying and pasting these over. So here's my MAC address, same thing, a one meter zone. So I'll go ahead and add that. So I have PTS offices, I have my desk and tech room. So these are my two zones. Um, those are the only two I have configured right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next. Uh, the final part of this wizard is where you'd like to send this beacon information. Um, so this could be your own custom database. It could be a, a HTTP endpoint. It could be uh, an Excel workbook, anything like that. Um, one option you have here, especially for trialing this out is this default local uh, MS access database. And you can go ahead and select uh, BLE zone tracking table and just hit done. So what this does here is it actually just stepped you through that wizard and configured ClearStream for the zone tracking. So at this point, you don't actually have to do anything other than start this up. Um, but you can see anybody that's familiar with um, ClearStream, it just added all of my devices to this devices tab here and automatically mapped them to that destination database that you've configured on the right-hand side. So if you needed to change this in any way, you can go ahead and uh, tweak it. 
Um, but a lot of these things are now set up pre-configured for you for what we have found to be the best settings for doing the zone-based locationing with DLE. Um, if I were to jump into the devices tab here, you can see I have the different zones configured as well as a group, which is my facility, uh, the PTS offices. So this is all pre-configured for you by that wizard. So you'll see when I start this up that they're transmitting their signal and it's being received by the gateway on my desk here. And you can see it went up to the two. If I jump over to the database viewer here, I can see it's made two entries now into location PTS offices. The reader name here is my desk. And you can see that it has the, the different MAC addresses of the two beacons I'm using. So these would be the IDs of that. Or if I had used, I wanted to use the major and minor numbers as well, they come over into this. So you can see it's made two entries into our database because it's sitting at my location here now. now I don't have a video uh, camera on me, unfortunately, uh, for you guys to see this, but what I'm gonna do is take these beacons and actually walk down the hallway. And actually, wait, I wanna back up one second because I do want you to see this in real time. We have a tool that's available with Clearstream um, that's called the Clearstream Zone Tracker. And it's available in the install location of Clearstream, which is program files, PTS, Clearstream RFID 7, and it's the Clearstream ZT zone tracker application. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Uh, and I wanna close down the project that I was working on before. But what I wanna do is come back to Clearstream. Let me just stop my reader. And I wanna save my project. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna call this uh, webinar demo. This is my project. Let me go change it to something else because I have that already. BLE zone, webinar BLE zone, and save that. And now over on the uh, zone tracker, I'm going to open this project up. So if I go to file open, go to my projects, the uh, newest one I have here is webinar BLE zone, and I just select the project that I saved. So this little tool here will allow you to see in real time where these beacons are. Um, and you can open it up within the Clearstream install path. And really all you do is do file open and select the project that you saved in Clearstream. And it'll open up these different viewers here for uh, the different zones that you've configured. So if you have more zones here, you'd have more viewers and you can see where all of your beacons are. But you can see at my desk right now, I have these two beacons. Um, again, uh, this beacon here by this MAC address and this one. And what I'm gonna do is walk down the hallway with these two beacons and bring them over into the tech room and I'll leave them there and I'll walk back just to uh, talk a little bit about what hap happened, although it should be pretty, um, transparent to you, but I'm gonna walk these beacons down. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a camera, but I'm walking down the hallway into the tech room, and I'm gonna go ahead and put these nearby the gateway that's in the tech room there and place them uh, in that location. So now that I walk back, um, you probably have already popped up. Um, walking back into my office here, and I forgot to start the gateways. <laughs> so let me hit start on this. And I'll do this again so you can see it come over in real time. But now as these gateways start up, you'll see the beacons are now down in the other room, in that tech room, and they've been automatically transferred over into the tech room location and making two additional entries in our database for that location. So if I refresh the database, you can see those two beacons both now have been recorded in the tech room. And when using the viewer, I can see they're in that tech room. As long as I leave those gateways running, I'm gonna walk back down into uh, the tech room I'll grab those beacons, walk back over to my desk here, and then you'll see them pop up without me having to restart the gateways. So I apologize for that. But I'll go ahead and get, grab these beacons and I'm gonna bring them back. And they're being tracked the whole way I'm walking down the hallway here. So as they're coming in, the Clearstream is calculating the distance between the beacons and those gateways and calculating them once they get within that zone that we had uh, recorded, you can see they're moving over into the My Desk location, and they're being recorded so that you can now see those beacons at my desk. So in real time, I'm able to see the location of this beacon using this tool, or really you could build a viewer, you'd like your own viewer, you'd like to see this data. But then if I refresh my database, now I have two entries at my desk. So you can see it's tracking this in real time. It's creating tran uh, transactional records within our database to see the movement of this asset or this person, the personnel or whatever it might be. 
um, so that you can keep a historical kind of movement of these, uh, these beacons. So let me just do that one more time. Uh, you know, this time I'll take one. I'm gonna take, uh, I'm not sure which one I have here, but I'm gonna walk down the hallway with just one beacon. I wish I had a camera on me so you guys could see me just walk in here. Um, but I have this zebra super beacon that I'm gonna bring back and now it'll just switch those two. So that one will be at the one location and the other one will be, at, it's still sitting at my desk. Um, so I'm walking back. Okay, so it's already calculated that. So you can see they move uh, and keep track of the two different beacons. Uh, a, little, a couple of things you can do with this zone tool here. You can actually use aliases. So you can actually configure these beacons to have some other more human readable information. So if you are fixing these to personnel, you can put their name, uh, assign a, a name to the beacon. And then you could see that, you know, how he was at the tech room and then he went to my desk and back and forth. And you can see that as, a, as an alias to the beacon rather than just, you know, the MAC address here, which isn't too readable. Um, but you can see it's keeping track of that. So let me go get that beacon one more time, uh, just because it's kind of a fun technology to see. Um, I'm going to go get that one beacon, bring it back here. So again, I'm walking down the hallway. I'm going to bring it back into over by my desk. So I'm grabbing it right now. Walking back down the hallway. And this one will now be back at my desk. Once I get within the range of that one meter location that I have configured for these gateways. And once it gets recorded there, it comes back to my desk. So you can see I'm keeping, again, real time locationing. It's not XY location, it's zone location. Um, but I'm also keeping track of its historical location in my database to know exactly where these beacons are in my facility. Okay, so you can see how easy that is with Clearstream, just using that zone wizard uh, tool. You can go ahead and configure your zones. You can configure as many as you'd like um, and set those uh, zones up. Really just start Clearstream and it'll start tracking these beacons throughout your facility. One thing about that zone wizard is it only currently supports our menu gateways um, that you can get from, um, uh, from Clearstream. Uh, so those gateways are the ones that will be set up using that zone wizard. However, really any gateway that Clearstream supports, you can configure the zones uh, and it will set them up um, or you can set them up manually through the Clearstream application uh, to do the zone calculation. Uh, the wizard is just set up for the menu uh, gateways. However, that's probably something actually we could add to if anybody has any requests for the type of gateways they'd like to see. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show as far as Clearstream and tracking um, these beacons throughout your facility today. Again, it's a really easy setup um, if you're using that zone wizard. Um, so again, you're just stepping through that wizard. It's setting up your zones. Uh, as long as you set some filters on the beacons that you're looking to track, you'll be only getting those beacons. Um, it's an, probably an important thing to note because Oftentimes, there's more beacons in the environment than you might think, um, and Clearstream or your gateways will pick the other ones up that are in your environment, and you'll start tracking things that you don't know what they are. Uh, so you do want to set up your beacons to um, uh, configure your beacons to have that UUID value for your group of beacons, and then set those up as filterable options within Clearstream. So Clearstream's only tracking those beacons, and you're only getting that data. Otherwise, you might see other beacons in your environment that are uh, transferring uh, their location to Clearstream. Um, we've seen some things like Samsung TVs and things like that have beacons built into them um, and different products have them that Clearstream will receive and you get, you get locations for that type of um, device when you don't necessarily want that. You want just to narrow down to the beacon types that you're using um, and that would be something like an Eddy Stone or an iBeacon uh, in your environment. Okay. So with that, I'll jump back over to the PowerPoint. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please send them over. I'd be glad to answer any that you might have now. Um, bear with me one second, just bring this question panel up and please send those over. Um, and as always, if we don't get to them today or if you have anything you think about after the webinar or as you're trialing it, because we always encourage everybody to go to our website, download the trial and kind of check things out that we've talked about in the um, in the webinar, and if you have any questions at that point, please please send them over. Uh, I just see a couple here about um, is this webinar being recorded? Yes, 
the webinar is being recorded. Um, so please, if you have, um, or if you'd like to review it, we'll post this up on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're following us on uh, social media pages, you'll be, probably be notified of it, um, but you can kind of review it. And it's always good to, you could follow along if you download the product, just to make sure that, um, you know, you go through the steps. If you have any questions, you can kind of refer to the video. Okay, I have a question here. Can you add cameras to this system to take pics or video if equipment gets too far from a beacon? Um, unfortunately, you can't do that just yet. Um, it is something that we're kind of considering adding to Clearstream uh, for both beacons as well as fixed RFID. Um, it is something that we're looking into. If you have a specific use case and a type of equipment that you'd like to use for a setup like that, please reach out to us. Um, we'd be um, interested to hear uh, what you're looking to do, as well as the equipment that you're trying to integrate, because we have a couple of options that we'd like to explore with Clearstream, not even just on the BLE beacon side for if it goes outside of a zone to kind of take a, uh, an image of it, but um, even just uh, on the fixed RFID reader side, a UHF RFID tag that goes through a portal that's not supposed to. Turn on a camera, capture what it was, um, and capture that information into your database. So that is a use case that we're looking for, and we'd like to see uh, and explore what you're trying to set up, uh, as well as the type of equipment that you're looking to use, because we'd like to get some feedback on what cameras and things like that you'd like to integrate with Clearstream um, for that purpose. Uh, and we can see a lot of use cases for that in our, uh, our Clearstream product. Uh, another question here, whoops, just moved on me. I think I just deleted it, no, wrong question, I apologize. I wonder if I can undo that. It moved on me and I hit the remove of the, of the uh, question and I think I missed the one I wanted to remove, the one I just answered. Um, so I have uh, another question here. Uh, do you have a way to integrate floor maps? Uh, so this is a great question as well. And we don't have it out of the box with the Clearstream application. However, I did want to mention this actually. Uh, we have a, let me bring it up. We have a product uh, that I briefly talked about at the beginning of the webinar um, called our PTS Cloud. Uh, so our PTS Cloud is a service that we provide to build out a, a basically a web console for our customers. And it's a customizable web console that can be used for the for data collection purposes so that you could map these readers or on the Tracer Plus side, you can map your Tracer Plus um, data collection forms to a cloud. So that cloud is spun up by PTS and built per your spec. And I have up here um, one of the a sample of it. This is a uh, very similar to the tool that I showed you installed with Clearstream, but this is through the website. So again, this is a PTS cloud that's set up and I can log into it. And I can see if I go to view data, I can jump down to view beacons last seen. And this is showing the sort of the same data that you saw in that viewer. Now, one of the things that we're, we can do here is actually build out a floor plan of where these beacons are in that zone and put them sort of as an image in that map. So it's something we can offer and provide through our PTS cloud. It's not built into the Clearstream application on the Windows side, but it can be built into this web interface. And then the web interface, you're able to pull up on you know, a phone, a tablet, uh, anywhere you have internet access, you can bring up this PTS cloud and see your data. So this is an option if you don't have a backend database or if you'd like a customized central location for your beacon or RFID data, um, and it's a service that we provide to build out these PTS clouds. So um, this is something that you'd want to reach out to us about, and we can customize it. We can customize it. You can see here, this one's called blezone.ptshome.com. But if we uh, spun up a cloud for you, that would be customized for your setup, and you'd have your own web interface for viewing the data being collected by Clearstream and um, uh, Tracer Plus. I'm just trying to uh, move the question. There's a lot of questions here popping up. I'm trying to move the uh, size of it so I can read them all. This thing is very small. I don't. Okay, here's a question. Is there a way to get this to work with Tracer Plus using some integration between the two platforms? Um, yes, so uh, Clearstream, it's actually, it's built on top of our Tracer Plus Connect product, which is our syncing tool for 
Tracer Plus, um, the handheld application. So it's a similar product, and the, the setup is very similar in that it's a mapping of, of one of a source of data to a destination of data. In the Clearstream world, it happens to just be fixed readers and gateways to a destination. So they can actually live side by side. So you can have Tracer Plus connect syncing your Tracer Plus handheld data collected on Android or iOS devices. And you can have Clearstream running side by side with that collecting the beacon or RFID tag data um, for, for passive data collection. So a lot of our customers will have a mobile handheld to do maybe a, a, an RFID inventory for a, a room, but they might have Clearstream set up handling a uh, portal at that room so they can track when items go in and out of the room. So they can do the physical inventory and they're also passively tracking what's leaving and entering the room. So they can work side by side and they can be feeding the same system with that data. Tracer Plus Connect can be feeding data into um, your database system and Clearstream can be doing that to the same database system as well, but it's just mapped from fixed readers as opposed to uh, Clearstream. Uh, excuse me. So a question here, um, can you upload a list of beacons in batch mode or do they need to be entered individually? Um, there's probably a couple options here. You can get in, there's certain ways you can get those, if you're talking about the aliases that I had brought up, you can get those aliases into that Clearstream zone tracker um, by just copying and pasting that into a file actually that has the uh, beacon MAC address plus um, alias. Um, more commonly, I would say that's done on the database side. So that zone tracker is cool for using, seeing real time where the beacons are, um, but that's all it really does. It shows you where the beacon, the last location of that beacon. Um, on the database side, in where the, the tag data or the beacon data is being sent to, you could create just a, a flat database uh, table that has beacon ID plus um, you know, alias. And then all you would do is on that database, create a view that marries up the alias by beacon ID to your beacon ID table or your transaction table where all these beacons are. And then you're able to see the exact you know, user that might have the beacon or asset that has that beacon. And in that case, it would be whatever is provided in the database for importing, um, you could get that data into, um, into there so you get more human readable. Uh, but that's a good question. A question here, is there a, real, a retail application or use case that this could be utilized, i.e. high value meats, specialty items, et cetera? Lots of RFID labels and barcode items. Um, so this is a good question. I, really, beacons can be used to track anything, and they're similar to RFID tags, um, you know, EPC Gen 2 tags, in that they're both just really transmitting a, an identifier. Um, so they can be really used to track anything. You could track... Um, any type of product, personnel, assets, anything like that, anything you can put these beacons on. And they come in all sorts of form factors. There's waterproof beacons, there's um, disposable beacons, there, you know, there's all sorts of beacons that you can get. Similar to um, on the RFID side, all types of RFID or barcode labels that you can affix to products. So you could technically apply it to anything. Um, like you mentioned, they're high value meats or, or uh, products is probably the better use case for beacons because the one thing with beacons are they are more costly on the beacon side, not the, not the equipment side for capturing this tag data, but the beacons and they're battery powered as well. So you have to, if you're gonna keep these beacons for a while, you'd have to either change the battery or swap out the beacon if it's a beacon that doesn't allow you to swap the battery. So typically you'll see them more on a high value asset side, per, like personnel or high value assets tracking throughout a facility. Um, stuff like that where it, it's very important that you track this, it's very important you track where it is and it can um, make sense for the cost of the beacon to affix it to that product. So really, again, it could be anything that you'd like to attach these to. Um, it just has to, you know, you have to look at the cost of the beacon to what, what um, the environment says you should use. Uh, good question here. Does the beacon RSSI or signal strength value accuracy only to manage the distance between the gateway and the beacon? How do you manage overlap of read area? 
Um, so this is a good question. So yes, the RSSI is used in the distance calculation in Clearstream, and that's all internal to Clearstream. Clearstream gets that RSSI value uh, of the beacon, um, uses a fixed RSSI value as well, and calculates then the distance that it, it estimates the distance from the beacon to the gateway um, in every transaction that's made. So every time Clearstream receives a beacon, it calculates the distance that it's, it thinks that beacon is. Um, if you looked in that data, the distance is actually included with it um, on this data viewer in the data. I not have it mapped, where do I? I don't have it mapped in, oh, here, distance. So here, distance, you can see, this is in meters um, from the gateways. So those are calculated every time a beacon is read by the, uh, by the gateway and then sent to Clearstream. So Clearstream's doing that. And all of the gateways typically in an environment will be receiving this beacon. Now, I mean, that's not entirely true. There could be one, if it's a very large facility, you may not get a beacon read on a, for, you know, a zone on the other side of the facility or maybe through a couple of walls. It might make, only make it a couple zones over before the signal's completely blocked. So Clearstream then, knowing that it's going to get these beacon reads from multiple gateways, has to calculate, it also averages out to smooth it, that distance value for every beacon read. Um, and then once it averages that out, it can assume that it went from one zone to another. Now I will say, if you're standing perfectly between two gateways, you might get a little flicker because it's going to be in two gateways, say, uh, with line of sight. So there's nothing between the two zones. Uh, you're immediately bet between the two. You might see that beacon go from one zone to the other based on that calculation because it can fluctuate a little bit. But Clearstream tries to smooth the, smooth the data by averaging out a number of RSSI reads. Um, and once it averages enough out, it will then report it at that location as long as it's under the defined zone that you've defined using that wizard. Uh, question here, does Alien support Clearstream? If you mean Alien RFID, then yes, we support, or Clearstream supports the Alien uh, readers. It can support them through both the ARP protocol, Alien Reader Protocol, as well as LLRP, which some of those devices support. Um, so yes, you can plug in an uh, Alien RFID reader and Clearstream can um, uh, connect to that RFID reader and collect tag data. That is one of our supported types of devices. Okay, question here, do you have some way of, to send notifications based on predetermined conditions? Uh, so yeah, another good question. So this, um, this is something that uh, you might be able to configure within Clearstream, at least through an email. Uh, Clearstream does support uh, email as a destination. So if it happens to be a beacon that's not supposed to be in a certain zone, you can easily configure Clearstream to send you an email um, that that beacon has entered zone A. Um, the no-go zone or something like that. Um, the other option for that, if it needs to be something more involved, it would probably be done maybe in our PTS cloud. And our PTS cloud, we can kind of customize the alerts as you need them. Um, so maybe it's two types of beacons that shouldn't be in the same location at the same time. We could customize that to send out a, uh, an alert to say, hey, beacon A and beacon B are both in zone one. Um, it's not supposed to occur. You get an email or some type of notification to say that that has happened and shouldn't have happened. Um, so that can be all kind of customized in the PTS cloud side. In Clearstream itself, you can set up things that would be filterable. So only beacons that are in a certain zone plus that specific beacon, if that happens, you can send out an email alert. Um, but those types of things you could configure within Clearstream. It would only be an email. Um, but uh, you could configure that within Clearstream. Um, a follow-up question or a similar question. If the asset goes outside of its zone or area, is there a notification alert sent to show movement outside of the gateways like off-premises? So this isn't something that's just sort of built into Clearstream. You'd have to configure it to do that. You could. You can configure, like I just mentioned, filtering options that would allow you to send 
to an email if a beacon goes outside of a zone. Um, so these uh, zone, these uh, source destination options, I bring this back up, allow you to build this out. So I just set up the, the, the configuration for the zone stuff, but I could also send the beacon data from these zones to something else. So I can say PTS offices and then put some if options in here. If Mac equals something and zone equals not my main zone, so it's not equal to one of my zones, send an alert, which would be an email. So I could do a custom endpoint here and I could send it to an endpoint, which is an SMTP server. And you get an email of that. Now you could do other things like that. You could send this actually to a web service. Maybe you have a web service um, set up that it, would, it accepts a payload of tags that then sends a notification to somebody. So you can do sort of custom things like that. But one of the out of, out of the box ones could be an email. So you could say if uh, you know, MAC address 123 is not in zone A, then send an email. Otherwise, the first process here is just simply tracking zones. But the second process happens to be sending out emails when other things happen that you don't want to have happen in your environment. Uh, question, how does the software equate signal strength to a zone? Example you used, I think, was one meter by one meter for a desk. Um, <clears throat> so Clearstream's doing some behind the scenes calculations, uh, not to get into too much detail here, but the beacons will transmit a static RSSI value that can be used to calculate against the received signal um, RSSI value. And then based on a calculation there, it can get an estimated distance for that beacon in meters. Um, and then again, we do averaging of that so that it smooths it out so that you're not getting these peaks and spikes. Because if you put your hand in front of the beacon between the beacon and the gateway, you might get a spike then where the signal strength is used. Um, Clearstream smooths that data out so that it can get a more accurate zone location and then use that to determine if it went from one zone to the other based on your size that you've calculated. A couple things about that calculation, it tends to get a little bit more um, variable the further you get away from the gateway. So you typically don't want that large of zones because it could get much more um, flaky the further you get away from the, the gateway. If you're 300 feet away, you have a whole bunch of things moving around inside your environment, um, you know, you can get quite a bounce of those signals so that the distance gets much more variable, um, so it's not as accurate. But when you're close to these gateways, uh, you can determine their distance pretty well. Um, I will say we've done this, we have, you know, smallish, offices throughout our facility here, if we put a gateway in the middle of each room, we're able to see exactly which, uh, which room the beacons are in. And just think of small you know, offices and conference room, things like that. Uh, you can see exactly which ro room the beacon is in um, if you have those gateways. And the gateways run, I don't know, $60, $60 US dollars, um, maybe a little bit more than that, but for each room to be able to track the location of these assets in that in the facility. Okay, here is a great, great question that I'm not gonna have a, a definitive answer for, but to balance battery life and a timely transmission vi uh, visibility of the beacon, what is a good time interval to set the beacon transmit? What application can configure the beacons used in this demo? So this is a great question because it, it brings up a good point that these things are powered by batteries. So they have a limited life. A lot of them you can swap out the batteries and it's typically like one of those coin cell batteries. Um, so you'd open the beacon up and put a new battery in, you're good to go. Some of them are sealed, waterproof beacons, extremely um, durable beacons, and you're not supposed to open them up. Um, typically if you try, you probably break the casing, but they're meant to just be thrown out when you're done. Um, and because of that, you have to balance the battery life with some of these. Um, the battery life uh, can go down to something very, very low if you're transmitting a strong signal at a very high rate, or they can go up to number of years if you go down to a slow transmission rate with a weak signal. Um, so you have to kind of balance that. Now, if you're, using, if you're strictly using these beacons to know whether or not a beacon is in your facility, you don't necessarily care about even the location of it. 
then you'd probably want to reduce the, the signal down to something very low. So maybe you just want to know that that beacon is in our facility, at least for the day. You might put it down to a 20 second interval between sends for when it's transmitting its location. And then that beacon will last for probably a couple of years just doing that, just pinging out its, its ID every 20 seconds. Um, but you're getting a hit every once in a while in your facility, you know it's there. If it leaves the facility and you don't get that 20 second ping, you can say, oh, it left and you need to go look for it or it's an alert or whatever it might be. Um, but you don't necessarily care about the location. Now for the real time tracking here, you, you can't really use such a slow ping rate. Um, because you want to be able to get more data from that beacon specifically for averaging out that RSSI value. Because again, it bounces around quite a bit. You know, you walk into a, there's walls, there's people moving around, and you know, it might be around your neck on a lanyard. And you know, depending on the, the orientation of your body, you might reflect that signal quite a bit. So you want a higher ping rate um, on that beacon so that you get a couple of hits, even a couple of hits per second. I want to say that the beacons I have set up here are for a four times per second, they ping out their ID. Uh, and it's probably some mid-range power level. I don't know what the battery life is, what it would equate to on that, but it would be reduced battery life if I were doing then say 20 second ping, ping out. Um, now I can't say what that's gonna be. It depends on the beacon because the beacons have bigger batteries. Some of them have two batteries. Um, uh, it's very variable by the beacon. So you wanna look at the specs of the beacon that you're looking to use. They usually have a, an expected battery life with a couple of ranges. It might say something like, if you're pinging out at 10 seconds at, at this signal strength, it'll last expected last to be two years. If you're pinging out at 10 times a second at this signal strength, the expected battery life is one month. So it might break that out into um, in, on the spec sheet for that beacon, but I can't talk to every beacon. They're all different in their battery life, uh, their, their, um, the battery sizes and things like that. But it's something you want to look at the, back of the spec sheet. Uh, and the, follow, the final part to that question was what application can be used to configure the beacons used in this demo? So again, I use these Zebra Super Beacons. So there is a Zebra application that turns beacons on and off um, and also sets their power levels and things like that. You get that from, in this case, Zebra's website. You get that tool. It's a little Android tool. Um, they have an iOS version as well that allows you to turn the beacons on and off. Um, each beacon will have their own method for that. Uh, EM Micro is another common one we use. They have a tool that allows you to configure the beacons. Um, and they, they, there's actually little tricks with the beacons they'll do. I know there's EM Micros actually have motion sensors in them. So if the beacon's at rest, it'll ping out once every you know, five seconds, but you might want to configure that once it starts moving, ping out once a second. So you can change it and then it extends the battery life as well uh, for the beacon. Okay, I don't see any other questions here. Now I know I, I accidentally deleted a question. Um, if you didn't get your question answered, because there are actually no, none at the time being up on the panel here, please send it back over. I apologize too. Um, the screen moved on me when I hit the X there on the question. <clears throat> Uh, but in the meantime, I'll bring up our contact information on the PowerPoint here. Um, so if you do have any questions after the webinar today, we'd be happy to uh, answer those for you. Uh, so you see here our emails or the phone um, and open. Uh, and actually, I'll mention open office hours. So open office hours are a great chance to ask any question that you'd like. And we run them twice a week. Um, and you can log in. It's a go-to uh, go meeting or go-to webinar. You can log in and raise your hand to ask questions. So any questions that you guys might have, you could go ahead and just talk to one of our techs here um, and they can give you best practices or answer your questions through that forum. And it's a great way to, to learn about in Tracer Plus, learn about Clearstream and just answer any questions you guys might have. Uh, we do that twice a week, you see the times on here. Uh, but I don't see any other questions. Um, all right, as long as there's no other questions, I appreciate you guys all for hopping on the webinar today, taking some time out of your day to check um, clear stream out with uh, BLE zone beaconing. Um, so we do we definitely appreciate that. Uh, we encourage you guys to download the demo if you haven't already to kind of take a look at the technology, uh, you know, see how you can set things up and, um, you know, give us any feedback or follow up with any questions you may have. But with that, is there's, there's no other questions. Like, thank you again. Um, thank you all again. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, thanks a lot and bye-bye.